Instead, we are introducing the antigen so that our body can produce its own antibodies. So this is, hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to be talking about active immunity as well as passive immunity. These are the two main types of immunities. We're going to look at the differences between them and we're also going to be looking at the types of active and passive immunity. So stay tuned. The two types of immunity is active or passive immunity. Now the main difference between the two is the source. All right, so let's start our comparison. So the first difference between the two types of immunity is the source of immunity. Now it is important to know what we mean here by immunity. Immunity here means the antibodies that is going to fight against pathogens and other foreign substances that enter the body. Now this is produced by white blood cells. So the source of these antibodies determines whether it is an active immunity or a passive immunity. So if these antibodies are produced by our own body, that means by the body's own immune system, then it would be categorized under active immunity. Pathogens are microorganisms that cause disease. So when there are microorganisms that cause disease in the body, our body will produce antibodies against it. Or when there are foreign substances that enter the body, substances that do not belong in our body, such as venom, such as snake venom. These substances are toxic and do not belong in our body. Our body will detect it and produce antibodies. So in this case, it is called active immunity. Now, passive immunity, of course, is when these antibodies are not produced inside our bodies. So this is external source. When we have an external source of antibodies, then it is called passive immunity. This means that the antibodies are produced outside of the body. It could be in the lab, but not always, all right? or it could be from another person. We will discover more of that later. Now, when it is already produced and in just introduced into our body, this is called passive immunity. The point of difference is the time to acquire immunity. Time to acquire what is meant by this is how long it takes before the antibodies are ready to fight against the pathogen or the foreign substance. Time to acquire immunity. So we can make sense of this depending on the source. Since for active immunity, our body's own immune system is going to produce the antibodies, it makes sense that it will take some time. It will take some time for our body to recognize the antigen, which is the pathogen or the foreign substance in the body, and to produce antibodies against this antigen. So this is going to take some time. Relatively, it is long. Long here means probably a few weeks to a few months, depending on the type of uh, pathogen, depending on the type of disease, then the type of vaccine, right? So this is relatively long. Whereas for passive immunity, the antibodies have already been produced. The antibodies are being introduced into our body. And so the antibodies are effective immediately. It's immediate. It doesn't take any time at all. As soon as the antibodies are introduced into our body, they are ready to go. They are ready to get rid of the antigens. All right. Then the next point of difference is the period of immunity. So do not confuse period with time to acquire immunity. This is how long it is going to last. Again, we can make sense of it. Since active immunity is an immunity where our own body produces the antibodies, so this is going to last for a very, very long time. In some cases, it lasts up to a lifetime. You only take the vaccine once and it's going to be effective throughout your lifetime. In other cases, it will last for several years. So very long. An example of this would be the chickenpox vaccine. Once you get chickenpox or if you are injected with the chickenpox vaccine, then the effect is usually a lifetime. You don't have to take it again after that. Or once you've already gotten the disease, then you will not get it again. So this is the period of immunity. Then for passive immunity, since our body did not produce it, it was simply introduced into the body. Once the antibodies degrade, then it is no longer going to be produced by the body. So therefore, the effect is short. It may last a few weeks to up to a few months. Normally, it would last a few months. But after that, it would drop very quickly. 
So this is the difference between active and passive immunity. When our own body produces the antibodies, it is active. When it is produced externally and introduced into our bodies, then it is passive immunity. Now, even within active and passive immunity, we have another classification, and that is whether it is natural or artificial. So let's look at that now. Natural active immunity is when we get an infection. So when we get an infection, then we have a pathogen in the body. The body cells will recognize this as a foreign substance, as an antigen, and our white blood cells will begin to produce antibodies against the antigens. And this is when we call it active immunity, because our own body is producing the antibody. So this is a type of natural active immunity. An example of artificial active is, even though it is artificial, this is still a type of active immunity, and therefore our body still produces the antibodies. Now, an example of artificial active immunity is vaccination. Vaccines actually contain either dead or non-active, non-virulent microorganisms that would cause the disease which we want to produce the antibodies against. Or it could also contain fragments of proteins, which will act as the antigens for the substance we want to produce antibodies against. So these are introduced into our body so that our white blood cells will recognize them as antigens, as foreign substances, and produce antibodies against them. So this is an example of artificial active immunity, vaccines. And then we have passive immunity. So the same thing happens here. We have both natural and artificial passive immunity. Natural passive immunity is passed down from mother to child. Immediately after the mother gives birth for mammals, colostrum is produced. Colostrum is known sometimes as the first milk. Now, this milk contains a lot of nutrients as well as antibodies. So these antibodies are passed down to the baby when the baby is breastfed. When the baby is just born, it does not have a fully developed immune system yet. And therefore, antibodies are directly passed to the baby from the mother through the colostrum. An example of artificial passive immunity is antiserum. Now, what is antiserum? Antiserum is a mixture that contains antibodies. It already has the antibody. So these antibodies are directly introduced into the body. Therefore, it is a type of passive immunity because antibodies are not produced by the body. Now, how are these antibodies obtained? First, the antigen is injected into horse blood. White blood cells in the horse blood will recognize these antigens and produce antibodies against them. So now, the horse blood will be full of antibodies. Then the horse blood is drawn containing the antibodies and the antibodies are extracted from the blood and administered as antiserum. Now, this is very important, especially for those diseases that are potentially fatal and need immediate attention. For example, rabies. If we get infected with rabies, then we cannot administer any vaccine because the disease is already active. We have to remember that vaccines take time before they can be effective against the disease. So, we need to administer the rabies antiserum instead. This antiserum already contains the antibodies needed to immediately fight against the disease. Let's do a comparison of the level of antibodies in our blood after the administration of vaccine and after the administration of antiserum. Let's say we are administrating the first dose of vaccine in the body at this time here, first dose. So remember that a body takes time to produce the antibodies against the antigen that is administered through the vaccine. And therefore, the level will go up slowly. However, it will also start to fall. And at this time, this is where we need to introduce the second dose, which is known as the booster dose. So here we administer second dose or booster. And once you've administered the booster dose, what happens is, this time the level of antibodies will rise above this line. And then it will come down very slowly. Now what does this line represent? This line, this dotted line here, represents the effective concentration of antibodies that is able to fight against the disease, that is able to keep the disease under control. So the first time may not be enough to achieve this level, and so a booster dose is administered. After the booster dose, the level goes down very slowly, 
and that's why it lasts a very, very long time, sometimes through a whole lifetime. But when we administer antiserum, let's compare. So let's say we administer the first dose here, first dose of antiserum. Remember, antiserum already contains the antibodies. When we administer the antiserum, we will ensure that it will result in a high enough concentration above the effective concentration needed to keep the disease in check. Now, since this is a passive immunity, the level of antibody will start to drop very quickly. And if the disease is still not under control yet, after the level of antibodies have dropped below the effective level, then a second dose may be needed. This is a second dose. If the disease is already in check, already under control, then there's no need for this. However, in some cases, it may not be. Then we introduce the second dose and the level will go up again and it will fall down in the same pattern. This is because the body does not produce any antibodies. These antibodies are produced outside the body and just administered into the body. That's it for this video guys. I hope you've learned something. If you have, please help support me by subscribing and also hitting that like button and hitting that notification bell as well because sometimes YouTube does not notify you if I produce a new video. If you're interested in short lessons and daily notes and quizzes, then you can follow me on Instagram as well as TikTok. I'll see you in the next video.